This talk is the result of some uh, research I was doing um, regarding correctness and um, challenges and problems uh, related to the integral types uh, of the C++ uh, language. As we have uh, heard in the uh, keynote, you basically have um, roughly uh, 15 to 50 uh, bugs uh, in, in your code. Uh, Change the normal uh, if I move, uh, it seems to. Yeah. Um, right. So the, um, the the problem with um, with uh, code correctness is that uh, it's something that everyone has been trying to solve for a long time, and um, uh, the the number uh, which Andre uh, Andre mentioned in the uh, in the keynote was independent of the language you use, which means that it doesn't matter what technology you have, you still uh, uh, have a, like a constant um, number of bugs, which means that the, uh, you cannot solve correctness via uh, mechanical uh, approaches, right? And uh, this is um, this is 50 years ago. Uh, this uh, conference uh, took place, and the uh, the uh, a group uh, present there uh, made this uh, list of challenges which they were facing at the time. At the time, you had mostly projects uh, which were one of a kind. And if you look at this list today, you cannot eliminate any point of that list. Okay. This is uh, this is quite uh, depressing in a way. Uh, you can actually add things to that list. Okay. When we, when we wrote our uh, write our code, uh, we we generally do it uh, in a bottom up fashion. It's uh, this is like uh, what everyone is doing. And there are two keywords here which uh, I want to focus on. And one is uh, preconditions, and the other one is errors, detection and handling of them. The, the precondition part and errors are part of um, the preconditions are part of the documentation of, of anything uh, you are using in your code. Either it's um, uh, basic operations you are you are uh, doing, or you are uh, calling uh, methods and uh, and functions. All of them have some preconditions, which if you do not observe, then the result is most likely undefined or uh, you get you get an error in uh, in return. So anyway, you do not get the result that uh, you are expecting. Now, it's on the error side, if something happens and it's not detected and handled in some way, also the result is uh, most likely undefined. The idea of of uh, preconditions and uh, um, uh, invariants and post conditions, errors, and all that uh, is old. It's roughly 30 years old, uh, which was introduced where uh, we had introduced the term designed by contract. And here I have an, uh, an, uh, an example of a function from the standard library. And it has two requirements which are stated in the, in the, uh, in the standard. And one is that uh, you need an input iterator, and the other one is a predicate. Right? Now, can anyone here name a situation where this function will not work as defined in the in the standard? You can provide two different predicates, different underlying objects. What do you mean by that? Uh, so you can provide two different underlying objects. What do you mean by that? Uh, you can have two containers and provide yeah, okay. This, let's suppose that first and last define a valid range. Uh, any, any other ideas? Well, I found, uh, came up with, with this list. And so the first uh, point there is that looking at the code, the if when you call the, the, the predicate, you don't want to have a conversion. 
if, if a conversion takes place, then you might have some kind of overflow. In my example, the flow to int conversion would also imply undefined behavior. But if you have any kind of overflow, uh, uh, the, the result is, is, uh, is not correct. Um, the second uh, situation which, which I came up with, um, the values um, in the range have to be independent because you are looking at each, each one of them in turn. right? And uh, these two uh, um, statements actually are part of the pre set of preconditions required by the function. And there might be other ones. Uh, for example, uh, you do not want in the predicate to invalidate the iterators, right? Um, you cannot um, reach these conclusions, like what kind of things you need to observe um, in order for the function to work correctly if you just um, uh, uh, know the, the signature of the function. Right? If you have a declaration and you look at it, you cannot say, I have to do this, 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 otherwise the, the result is unbe uh, undefined. This is why uh, contracts are very useful and basically uh, they should be adopted at a uh, wide scale. Another um, point which I would like to uh, make about that particular function is that if in the predicate and in the range the values have different meaning, then you cannot uh, you cannot compare them, which is normally what you do. But this particular um, uh, statement is not something which you can say uh, this belongs to to the contract of the function. This is something which the caller has to uh, has to uh, know and do in um, uh, by by analyzing the, their um, uh, code. Now, moving on to, uh, to the integral types, C++ has a wide range of types which are considered integers. And Boolean is one of them. But Boolean used in the context of integer operators will give you uh, an incorrect result when uh, seen as a Boolean value. Okay, so a bo the bool, the bool type, shouldn't have been one of the uh, integral types. Uh, I have here an, an example where uh, where these things don't work correctly. Now, characters. When you think about characters, the the words that come to mind uh, is implementation defined. There's nothing in the standard which says anything useful about the character types. Neither sizes, signs, uh, uh, encodings, uh, nothing. And on top of that, uh, the current accepted standard for characters is the Unicode. And the Unicode uh, is something uh, mostly misunderstood uh, by, uh, by the practitioners because it defines an end to one a relationship between um, um, code points and rep uh, representable um, uh, characters, which they name as glyphs. I have here some uh, examples of what end to one means, because it's actually multidimensional. So you have different code points which map to the same glyph, or you have strings of code points which define the same glyph. Um, at the, at the bottom, there is um, um, a, a line wrapping uh, uh, screenshot done by Notepad++ uh, Notepad++ program, where I have different um, composed uh, uh, Unicode characters, and you, as you see, um, uh, it's, it's not done uh, correctly. And I'm willing to bet that most uh, software which deals with Unicode strings will get this one uh, wrong. Uh, actually, Unicode has a lot of um, consequences for manipulating strings other than uh, this one. And uh, uh, things which come to mind is uh, comparing strings, sorting them, language dependent stuff. Um, it's really complicated. And since um, 
the C++ standard actually ignores the subjects completely. Everyone has to do it uh, on their own. In the Boost library, you have uh, all kinds of, uh, of uh, frameworks and, uh, and facilities. And uh, the Boost library uh, is widely used. Uh, it's open sourced. Supposedly, many people look at the code. And I have found uh, one example uh, from the XML parser, uh, which managed, uh, managed to have a mistake in almost every line. Can anyone spot uh, a mistake here? So, as I said, the default um, encoding for the, for the character is um, implementation defined. So that um, hash sign or uh, the X uh, could have different numerical values if you are, for example, on IBM uh, ZOS or if you are uh, on, uh, on a normal uh, Windows machine and you compile with, uh, uh, with fancy uh, character set. This, uh, um, this particular code is part of a template, uh, templated on the, on the character type. Uh, this is the CH, uh, where, where it comes from. And it tries to, uh, to parse the... Um, um, uh, the um, uh, what's the name? A uh, character reference uh, of the of the um, XML uh, standard, and uh, uh, this particular uh, code is uh, looking at the hex uh, uh, hex uh, variant of that one. Um, here we have um, uh, uh, we go, we go through each of the of the characters in the in the string, and we, uh, we look if uh, if there are uh, digits. Now, keep in mind that we are in a template uh, mode, right? And uh, this particular cast here will just chop off eight bits of whatever is in there, right? It might be the highest eight bits, it might be the lowest eight bits, you know, doesn't matter. But anyway, it doesn't work as uh, as intended. Then we get. Um, uh, infinite precision arithmetic here, where overflow cannot happen, right? Another precondition for this code would be valid XML input, you know. And at the end, um, the code is supposed to be uh, written, in this case, uh, back to the, to, uh, to the stream before um, uh, some uh, observers are, are called. And uh, it will just do a conversion to uh, ASCII or to UTF-8, uh, independent of, of the other uh, character types that you might have in the template. This is one, uh, one example where um, the white, um, white char uh, version of the, of the thing is used. And instead of the one character, which have, should have been the output, you, we can see um, three of them. Yeah. Um, these are not mistakes which you, I mean, it took me five minutes to identify many of them, but uh, these are not mistakes which you can say that you will not find in other uh, 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 software, right? I mean, everyone can, uh, uh, can do it, but you would expect from uh, a library like the Boost that it would uh, uh, sift out all this uh, uh, low-hanging fruit. Not to mention that basically it doesn't really have tests for that. Um, going to the real integers, um, the real integers, the signed ones, are uh, special in that, um, as opposed to the mathematical concept of, of integers, uh, they are neither uh, um, uh, tools complement nor uh, do they provide infinite precision. Right. So you have all these uh, operations uh, which, uh, uh, which normally are uh, undefined on some, uh, on some ranges of, of, of the values. Right. For, um, for the unsigned integers, the first uh, three um, um, 
mentions of uh, places where this thing uh, doesn't work uh, is not true. So um, it's, uh, the unsigned, unsigned integers are associative, uh, so for, for addition uh, they have the commutativity and uh, uh, the multiplication is uh, distributive in that even if you have overflow, uh, in the end you get the same result on all platforms. Um, okay, go back. Okay. Oh. Now, uh, going to C++. Um, in C++, white space matters. Um, due to integral promotions, uh, if, if you write your code in um, uh, doing multiple operations in one line, or if you separate them on, on different lines and you have uh, a type which would get promoted to, to uh, int, then um, in case of um, some overflows, you, you would get different results. The interesting uh, point here is that you cannot say just by looking at the code which variant is the desired one. Right? I mean, you need some extra information uh, to, uh, to know. Doing uh, the, the research on um, in, uh, um, integer overflow handling, uh, I was uh, looking at, at the uh, Boost uh, Accumulators uh, framework, uh, which is um, doing some uh, statistical uh, accumulators. And this is basically uh, the, the sample that they have uh, there. It's, uh, I just used the int type there to get the uh, uh, sum of whatever uh, I'm putting into the accumulator and the uh, mean value. Now, normally if, if there is any handling of, uh, of overflow, you would have to see somewhere in the documentation. So this is the user's guide where they have some uh, description of the um, uh, sum, uh, in this case, uh, operator. And this is the reference, which is a header dump of whatever is in there. It's completely useless. I mean, they could just remove it. So we can go on and test uh, what, what's happening when you, when you do an uh, overflow, right? And I would like to, uh, uh, to mention that not only the sum uh, has the wrong value, but the mean as well. Mean internally uses, uh, uses sum. So you have the cascading effect where one error in one place, hidden some uh, three levels deep, would affect the result uh, in a different place. And uh, most of the time, you cannot tell the difference. You cannot say, OK, this value is not uh, the correct one. The, the interesting uh, thing about the uh, boost accumulator is that the um, author actually was thinking about uh, the, uh, this problem. He understands that it could have happened. Right? And uh, this is actually uh, the, the code you can, you can find there. Okay. But as, uh, as the standard library uh, is also known for, it will just ignore the problem because it's not mathematically pure or something. Um, List, um, the least common multiple uh, function was added uh, to C++ 17, and as a requirement, uh, it expects of you to know the result. Uh, because as a precondition, you, uh, the least common multiple has to be representable in the common type between whatever you pass in as parameters. Right? So you have to know the thing beforehand. Now, uh, with uh, least common multiples, it's very easy to overflow. I mean, with very small numbers, you can uh, get uh, huge results because uh, multiplication will actually require double the number of, of bits, right? Um, now, a least uh, common multiple is also present in the, in the boost library and has the same um, preconditions. Uh, and such approach where the authors would name the uh, integral, uh, integral overflow can happen, but you know they can't do anything about it. Is quite uh, popular. So Boost Rational has uh, mentions about that. Um, the histogram uh, uh, library from uh, from the Foley library uh, also says that yeah, 
if you have uh, overflow, it's, uh, you just should, should use small values. This is exactly what, what it says there. Um, now, uh, the, the standard has for uh, maybe 20 years, if not more, um, the accumulate function. Now, the accumulate function um, has no, um, uh, doesn't say anything about um, uh, about uh, overflow, and also and it doesn't really say anything about requirements on, on the uh, on the types. Right? I mean, you could still have the situation like uh, previously that uh, uh, conversions would would be uh, implicit conversions would be performed and all that, and. Not only that, but accumulate has access uh, to the range of data. So in theory, it could provide the correct result as long as the sum will fit the, uh, the type you are, you are um, um, uh, giving it to. And uh, I think this is um, a thing which, uh, uh, which, is a, which is a problem, a big problem for the, for the standard library that it, it has many, many primitives. These are just uh, some example, which uh, uh, simply uh, will will give you a wrong result, and there's no way to actually verify it unless you do the whole computation yourself, or you create all kinds of uh, of uh, complicated uh, wrappers around your type, uh, and this is something which everyone has to do, and in in, in my uh, opinion, it. The, the standard library by default it should do the correct operation and uh, if we look uh, most of the algorithms will also take a predicate and uh, you have the option if you want to uh, ignore the right thing and do your own kind of uh, computation right using the, the predicate if you do not want to verify for overflow you are you are free to do but by default uh, we should we should get the, the correct result it's too late now, unfortunately. So maybe we get a parallel uh, STL or something which uh, will uh, do the right thing. Because this is the uh, really sad part. The, the processor. So I, I cannot imagine that there's any architecture widespread which will not uh, uh, give you information when, when you, uh, about uh, overflows. Um, in any case, uh, Intel, ARM, and other things where, uh, where I looked at, uh, they have uh, such facilities. Um, this is an example of how you would detect uh, an overflow for, for addition and subtraction by doing um, um, a, a branch-free implementation. Um, I have underlined the place where uh, we also do the operations uh, using unsigned uh, semantics. So, uh, if you, um, if someone would uh, create a, uh, a library uh, for such things, they would, of course, uh, return the, the result. So, if uh, you would perform the operation and then you would get the information if uh, if some um, overflow happened. Now, in case of uh, addition and subtraction uh, overflow. Uh, means that a carry uh, occurred. So you can, uh, in theory, um, create uh, infinite precision uh, addition and subtraction just by uh, providing extra uh, words uh, to work on. Right? And this is, uh, this is important because uh, you want to have extensibility. You don't, you don't want just uh, detection. Uh, uh, there are a number of, um, uh, of algorithms which can be um, uh, which would benefit from from such uh, uh, things like um, or, or techniques like uh, if you want to do a fixed point arithmetic, right? You might want to have more um, more precision in there than just uh, 32 bit or whatever. Um, uh, this one uh, is um, uh, detection of overflow for uh, multiplication. Um, uh, NLZ uh, uh, is uh, a function which returns the number of leading zeros. Uh, so you have uh, uh, some loops there in the beginning and some other things. Uh, this is uh, quite uh, complicated. Normally, if you just translate this by hand into an assembler, you would 
uh, get away with like four or five uh, instructions. So uh, this one here is at, at least 50 instructions long uh, when, when you uh, compile it. Right? Now, for multiplication, you don't want just uh, to know if the an, o an overflow has occurred, as we saw in uh, LCM case uh, with small numbers, you can uh, you can get out of the 32-bit uh, uh, or whatever uh, size you have in there. So you would like to have a um, primitive which gives you uh, word by word, uh, resulting in a in a double word uh, operation, and. Um, this is a signed and unsigned uh, version. The unsigned, uh, the signed version will just uh, uh, correct for for sign, uh, calling the unsigned one. Division overflow is quite straightforward, at least on uh, normal machines. But if you are trying to do division uh, double word by word to get a double word and uh, um, a quotient and uh, a reminder. Uh, it's really complicated. I mean, uh, this is uh, the main uh, function in the in the middle part uh, is where the um, uh, complicated algorithms are implemented, and these are the the rest. So uh, this would actually work. I tested a, a brute force approach. Uh, so it was uh, it really. Um, I've shown a lot of, uh, of subtle bugs in there. Once you have such primitives, you could implement the, uh, different algorithms at least to, uh, to detect that um, uh, the, the operation hasn't uh, succeeded. And you can do it in a way that doesn't really add um, uh, a lot of penalty at runtime. Uh, if, we, if you really look at the uh, outline um, section, we see that we do not have a branch in there. We do not test for the overflow inside the loop. We just uh, accumulate the, uh, the information and at the end we, we test. Uh, I also uh, put uh, the assembly uh, implementation of that at overflow um, uh, function. So this is what I would expect that uh, would translate to. Okay. And as I said, this is uh, uh, still not optimal since you would want to have the, the correct result in case that uh, at the limit the, the value would fit. And if you think about it, it accumulates as it's defined right now, doesn't work correctly with floats as well. Since with floats, you, your concern is that you want to have the uh, the error, the minimal error for, for whatever uh, data you have in there uh, at the end, not any uh, kind of uh, error. Is C++ the only one which does weird things with integers? Well, no. Uh, Haskell is supposed to be like the greatest uh, functional language uh, for the research uh, community. And they have decided that uh, their uh, integral type um, will be a variable in, uh, in length. And they chose 30 bits as the minimum length for, for integers. And then you can at runtime uh, verify what's, what's, the, uh, what's the actual range. And if they have an overflow, they also they haven't defined that, they say that in our terms, it's implementation defined. So the, the code is not portable, but this was actually uh, clear for anyone um, uh, reading the, the first paragraph, where they say that uh, the IEEE floating point arithmetic was too complicated to be implemented in their um, prelude library, and that they ignored some parts of it. It's not stated, or at least not, there's no reference here, which parts of the uh, uh, IEEE standard were ignored, right? This is also something which uh, basically makes the code uh, written in Haskell uh, non-portable uh, among uh, various architectures. As I said, uh, in, con in conclusion, it would be really nice if, if the standard library would provide um, 
various uh, options for uh, add, uh, subtraction, uh, and, uh, and so on, uh, including, for example, add with carry and all that, so that you can uh, write your code the right way. And many, many uh, compilers also pro many, no, not so many. So GCC, for example, has uh, uh, special uh, intrinsic um, calls which uh, would perform the operation and then return uh, if, if uh, overflow uh, happened just by uh, uh, looking at the, um, at the flags. But these are not portable, right? So if you go uh, on, on MS, uh, MSVC, this, it wouldn't have that one. It might have a different one, but it's still uh, um, compiler specific and every time you are trying a new compiler, you might have uh, uh, your a problem on your hands. And as we've seen, the, the implementation uh, is quite expensive compared with uh, what the machine would, would give you, right? Um, Going back to uh, to the templates that we have uh, examined, uh, we saw that, for example, for the characters, you know, he was just really going for for char, and uh, and when 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 you are going for char, and you assume that you are in a specific uh, environment, which in that case most likely was uh, Linux uh, or Unix in general, where, where you have UTF-8 as the default encoding. Uh, I mean, it's it's uh, it's clear that. When you, when you have a, a, a template and you are working with the T, the T is an uh, abstract concept, and that concept has to be has to hold with all the preconditions for any other actual T where it might be used. Right? The same uh, uh, the same is true for find if. The same is true for uh, for accumulate. So. Um, I, this is why I am saying uh, that we have uh, this LSP for, for, for templates, the uh, Lishkov uh, substitution principle, which uh, in, in that case you, you, uh, you are talking about the um, hierarchy of, of classes and uh, you didn't want uh, a subclass to, to have a different behavior than what was expected of the, of the base class. It's very easy to create unusable interfaces. Let's uh, have a look at uh, the uh, least common multiple or other um, the accumulators. Right? Uh, you, you can't you can't use them uh, in a in a, gen, in a general way where you can have any kind of data. Um, the strings in general are um, uh, the the primitives that we have right now are unusable to have the correct result. So. Now, the, uh, by documentation is part of the API. I mean the the contract itself. Um, there's no way to guess what the contract is. You have to know it and you have to um, uh, to abide by it. And if if you discover that something changed, and you add a new precondition or something, then your API has changed. So everyone using your API should uh, should know about it by basically um, have it making sure that the code doesn't compile. This is my uh, my suggestion uh, because in this way, uh, just having the, the release notes, yeah, breaking changes, that that doesn't help, right? No one reads that, or someone else uh, uh, changes the uh, the library. Uh, and you don't know about it, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, but your code was broken from the beginning. But at least you don't have a chance to to fix it, right? And I really think that uh, when someone puts a library out there, um, he should make sure that contracts are defined, that tests are uh, provided, and that it actually does uh, what it says it does. Uh, I mean, uh, we we will not we will not solve the problem by uh, creating a new uh, a technique, uh, a new template, or whatever uh, uh, features in the in the in the language. Um, yeah. Any questions?
questions? Hi, thanks for the stimulating talk. Um, I actually have difficulty understanding uh, some part of it because you showed us um, variants of these functions for performing arithmetic operations mm -hmm. which uh, detect whether an overflow is happening. Uh, and I saw that they have considerable amount of bit twiddling inside them. You have all sorts of shifts and ors to detect these kinds of situations. So I imagine that this, all of this uh, happens to incur some sort of penalty, uh, computer, uh, computative wise. But at the end you said that you expect this just to resolve to one or two instruction assembly, so it's just basically an uh, add and uh, some set zero, which I don't understand. So maybe I'm wrong, but my idea would be that the language itself could provide some capability for exposing the flags that the CPU has, like for overflow and for carry zero and stuff like that. And we could, based on that, you know, make this implementation much simpler, where you don't have to just twiddle the bits. You could just perform the operation and check the very, um, value of the flag if the overflow happens. So uh, what am I not getting there? Can you right. just right. Spe specify? Thanks. Yeah. Well, in a way, that's, that's what I'm advocating for as well, like to have this uh, primitives as part of the, of, the, uh, of the standard library so that the compiler uh, implementers and the, and the library implementers would have the optimal uh, implementation which would result in uh, uh, this simple uh, versions. The ones which are shown there are portable in that you can, uh, you can use them on, on any uh, uh, processor. Um, you, in case you didn't notice, um, last week at the standards group meeting, they finally accepted wording that integers are to complement. I, I saw that one, yes. For Which C++ means you, you could start to have things like this because those assumptions now hold everywhere in C++. In, in C++. Uh, no, because they said Okay, the integer, assigned integers are uh, to complement, but if you overflow, you are still in undefined behavior land. So, um, but let's assume that they say um, we have to complement, everything is defined. You still don't want overflow, as we saw with the uh, with the uh, mean uh, calculation for uh, for the uh, boost accumulators. Uh, if you depend on something which is already wrong. Uh, the the result is uh, is not as expected. So, yeah. Any other questions? Well, thank you for the talk. Thank you very much.